And if you have one path along the graph, and you if you want to multiply with another path, well, you just concatenate, if I pronounce it correctly. I just put them next to each other, so you get a new path, if you can combine. If you cannot combine, you get zero. So this gives you the product in this ring, and you get an answer. All right. Now, in order to define the Levy path algebra, I start with this graph E again. Now, I'm going to look at the double of this graph. What does that mean? So if you, this graph has these edges here, U, E, F, G, these are your graph with the edges. I'm going to add edges going backward. Okay, so now my graph, the double graph, so to say, has all these edges also. I call this G star, and in literature, they call it ghost edges because I'm not going to draw them, but they are there, okay? So ED has all the edges and the edges going backward. All right, and then I get the path algebra of this, all the paths. Now the path now involves E and E star, F and F star. Now, I put two relations here. And I'm just showing you with the pictures. The relation one is, imagine your graph has your, this one here, G, uh, no, H and K. All right. Now, if you're standing here, U, I would say you go out of U with all the possible way you can go. You go with E, you backtrack. You go with F, you backtrack, you go with G, you backtrack, and that means you have not moved. So in a way to kind of say that you are still on U. So U is the same as moving up and down, up and down, up and down, and that's the rela one relation I impose here. The other one is, and shows you that it's not symmetric, is that what if you go along the go stages? So look, H is getting inside U. I go backward along H, H star, and then H, if I do this, then you recover um, U. So these are the relations. And you, you go along the graph and you put these relations on each point, in, on each vertex. So in a way, if you look at the Levitt construction, and if you look at this construction, this is kind of a Levitt construction locally. So Levitt has just one vertex and he put the connect, uh, relations here. I go along the graph and on each edge, uh, sorry, on each vertex, I put these relations. So locally, I'm just doing the same thing. All right, so now you have this Levy path algebra. Let me call it LEK. So K is the, this coefficients coming from the field K. So Levy path algebras. And well, I mean, there is now a book. So I just mentioned the book here uh, by Jean Para Ara and uh, Molina uh, Mercedes. It's called Levy path algebra. I think 2019, I would think, and lots of results. So there are, you know, there are about maybe 200 papers now on this on this ring um, or algebra, and a lot of results you can find here. Now, in order to understand this ring or any ring, one of the approaches is that I look at all the representations of this ring. Okay, so in terms of algebra, that means I'm looking at all the modules. So modules over LKE. In reality, that means I'm collecting all these modules and I'm gonna look at this category of all the modules. And you look at the algebra books, you know, you understand this module, you understand the structure of the Levy path algebra. One of the first question is that, what representations are simple, i.e. that representation has no other representation inside it. So simple representations. So this is a big deal both in the Levy path algebra and in other places, I imagine representation theory, that if I hand you a ring, give me all the simple representations. Okay, before I move further, let me just tell you that there is a very sort of general cost construction of modules over this kind of combinatorial algebras. And this was known already for path algebras, but you can generalize this for other algebras. So very quickly, I mentioned this. All right, so now for just path algebra, so you have a graph E, 
and you want to give me a module. So imagine your graph looks like this. This is V1, this is V2, and this is V3, and there are edges connecting them. So if I want to construct a module over this um, path algebra, what I would do on this graph, I'm gonna plug here vector spaces, just any arbitrary vector spaces, I place them on the vertices, okay? And for any edge, I'm going to define a linear transformation between these vector spaces. Okay. Now you can show that any system that I give you like this gives me a module over a path algebra. And on the other hand, any module you give me, I can give you a system of this type. So now, very quickly, how would you say, okay, so if you have another one, another module, and a morphism, what would happen here? Well, here you have these, so V1, V2, V3, you plug here vector spaces, maybe for N is W1, W2, W3, and there are these lin um, linear transformation. Now, if, on the level of this category, you have a morphism here. How would you define morphism here? Well, it's like this. So you should have a maps here between the vector spaces that you distribute upstairs and the vector spaces you distribute downstairs. There is these maps. And as usual, you can guess that these diagrams can be. So this is the object of this new category. And it's very beautiful that now the module category of PE is isomorphic. This category is isomorphic or equivalent to the, if I call these objects representation of E. So any of these object is a representation of E. You collect all these. This gives you this category rep of E. And you can prove that this algebraic sort of structure is the same as, I would see this as kind of a combinatorial structure because vector space is kind of combinatorial and these are just, you know, moving the bases to each other. All right, so this was known for a long time. Now there is a paper by Edward Green. It's a very beautiful paper. Published in 1983 in Transaction of American Mathematical Society. And he said that, all right, so now let's go back here. Remember the, for example, a Levit path algebra is just a path algebra with bunch of relations, right? So now, what if I introduce these relations? Can I modify this bit here to get the representations of my Levit path algebra with this representation here? And he carries this over and he says that, yes. So if you have relations over this E, you force the same relations on here. So very quickly, um, you know, you can look at the paper. So uh, for example, one of them was that E star E is, I don't know, U. You force that this would happen on the level of vector spaces, identity of this here, okay? So you force these relations that you introduce over A here. Then everything goes through. Namely, I can write here mod PE, with some relations is happens to be the same as representation of E if I introduce those relations here. Maybe I just write this one more time. This is important. So mod of P, P, K, E with certain relations is the representation of E with these relations. Okay, so now, Levit path algebra sits into this uh, system. So you have relations here, you introduce relations on the level of graphs, and you get that the representations are the same as this one. And all these Levit path algebra-like that are in the market, so weighted Levit path algebra, separated Levit path algebra, ultra levy path algebra, there are a lot of these, right? So you start with some combinatorial way, graph, you know, with some extra gadgets. All those relations, if you look at it, fits into here. So you always have a complete representation. You always know all the modules over your levy path algebra, it's here. 
But again, if you approach this way, and I, I would ask you, okay, tell me the simple ones. It's not very easy to read out of this, the simple ones, for example, or indecomposable ones. In fact, even on this level, if I say, what are the indecomposable ones here? Or, you know, tell me, it's not easy. There is this celebrated uh, theorem of Gabriel that characterized the indecomposable ones and what graphs has, you know, certain decomposable ones. So it requires work if it's possible to done to be done it, it requires work okay now let me move back to levy path algebra and they're just the simple ones so came a paper in 2014 by chen um, from the from university of uh, chinese university of science and technology in hefe and he gave a very very nice and so that you can really feel uh, way, um, construction of simple modules over Levy path algebra. And so that work continued. I, I should also mention Rango Suwami, which construct on the top of chain simple modules, Rango constructed uh, more variety of these. And maybe I mentioned this paper of um, and and Nam very recently in advances in uh, math 2021. So this is a good read, and then uh, it basically also tells you how these simple modules are constructed, and they look at different ways to do this. Okay, so very quickly, how Chen started uh, because it's very combinatorial, combinatorial and nice. So you start with the gra graph E, and if you can get an infinite path, so suppose you have an infinite path. So you have an infinite path in the graph. Then you collect all the paths which are tail equivalent to this path. So by tail equivalent, what I mean is that maybe there is another path with at some stage just you know, coincide with the path P. Maybe there is another one here. And remember, this is an infinite path. It goes forever. So these are all, so this is your actual P and these are the tail equivalent one. Collect all these. So, and let me call this the, the set of all tail equivalent paths to P. Okay, so you have a bunch of now elements. Now construct a vector space with basis this all these infinite paths. So, so far very combinatorial. I just basically collect all these infinite paths in a line. Now, the next step is that, okay, I want this to be a Levy path algebra module. So I have to tell you how I act the elements of Levy path algebra on this, mod on this module, on this vector space. And it has to be well-defined. And once I do that, magically you can prove this, not only it's, it's a, Levy path algebra module, it's simple. So very quickly, and so if you give me, maybe I just give you one example, E, F, V, maybe G, and then maybe here. Okay, so you have an infinite path, and it starts with G, suppose. And then I need to tell you the action. So this is you. So if you want to multiply E with this one, if it match like the path algebra, if you can, can concatenate, you just put it next to it. So here it matches because U, start, U ends with U and G starts with U. So you just put it next to it. So you get an inf another infinite path and you see this is a, again, tail equivalent. Now you are dealing with elements of this type. Anywhere you see E star, just cancel E if it's possible. So if they're in your, path, in your path, it starts with E as it starts here. And then you want to do E star with that, this path here. Well, here you have E, you just cancel it. And you get another path, which is again, tail equivalent to that one. So this is, I took care of the case that it starts with E star and E. How about the other one? So imagine now your path, another example, your path looks like this, starts from V. So this was the example. 
maybe I'll just put it here. Your path starts with V and E, and then you continue, okay? Now, remember, I have these properties in Levy path algebra, and this should be satisfied when I'm doing the action. Okay, now, look here. You start with V, right? So what choices do you have when you start with V? Look, either you start with V and you go along E, or you go along F, all right? So, and you take one of them. And the relationship that you have here in Levy path algebra exactly takes into account these options. So either you start with E and you, you go you backtrack, or you start with F, you backtrack. You, can, you cannot do both. And therefore, if you multiply things here with E star, so you do E star with this path P, you end up with just P. Because one of these cancels P and then put back E, cancels E, but then put back E in the same place, but the other one doesn't do anything because it's zero. So this is one way to construct simple modules. So this is, I hope you just get the idea. So I just wanted to say that you can define simple modules and you require an infinite path. So starting from a finite path, you require an infinite path. Now, our job starts from here. Our work starts from here. And this is the philosophy of the work. So, so you have this graph E, and then you have this algebra, LE. Now you want to give me some module, okay. One way was this infinite path. The other way was those uh, representation of green. But philosophically, if you start with the graph and you give this algebra, maybe there would be another graph here somehow associated with this graph E. So you have E, you, you construct F, and out of F, you construct some object here that this object happens to be an LE module. So if your algebra comes from an E, it kind of makes sense that if you give me a module, that should come from some F, which has some relation with E. Okay. Now, before I tell you how I'm gonna, and the, the first question I asked you uh, at the very beginning is that, okay, so um, look, I start with E, and then I very co combinatorial way construct F. My question is, have you seen this construction somewhere? Because we haven't, okay. Now, before I do this, I want to do even more, namely, I want to work with weighted graphs. So all this construction goes through with weighted graphs, and if I do that, then for the first time, I can get simple modules over Levit algebra, these algebras, that you could not do with the uh, Levit path algebra. So these are the one in a different class. But this construction also gives you simple modules for these. Okay, now, so weighted graph, definition of weighted graph, can I ask you a quick question before sure, you go? Sure. So uh, your goal is to obtain every module over Levit path algebra or just some special type of modules over Levit path? Right. No, some special type. So yeah. I'm going to construct some modules. So some of them are simple. I'm going to classify some of them as simple. And if you reduce to graph with weight one, the usual graph, that gives you all the chain and rango so on, all these construction. I see, okay. But, yeah, but there are simple modules that sort of chain simple module cannot construct, and here also at the moment we, we cannot reach those. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what is a weighted graph? It's just a graph. <laughs> But then each of these uh, vertex, each of these uh, edges, ha they have some uh, weight. So there is, so if this is E, there is a weight I, I assign, so kind of natural, to these edges. Now, if I do this, I can also write it this way, E1, E2, E3, F1, and F2, right? So E has weight three, so in your head, or you can just say, okay, E comes with three edges, and F has weight two, just consider F1 and F2. If I do it this way, then I, I would write it E hat. So this is not a usual graph, 
So looking at it as a usual graph, it looks like this, okay. Now, in my head, when I work with weighted graph and it ha it's looked like this, then in a way you have three layer of usual graph. So layer one, E1 and F1, layer two, e, E2 and F2, and layer, th the third layer, it has only one edge, E3. Okay, and then a couple of uh, quick definitions. So I say the tag of EI is I, and the structure of EI is E. So this keep, this keep the track of, I mean, if I'm picking E2, where does this come from? It comes from E. Okay, now, what is the weighted Levy path algebra very quickly? Okay, so you start with E, which is weighted. You get this E hat, so all these, so if it's weight, E has weight three, so I get E1, E2, and E3 all in there. And then I get the double of that. Remember the double? So if you had E, I get the E star back. So if you had E1 and E2, I get E1 and E2 star going back. Now, the usual thing, you get the path algebra over this one. Now, so far I haven't done anything new, but now what is the relations? Let me just give you the relations with just one example. So if this is E1, E2, so this is a gra weighted graph and here E has weight two, F has weight two, and maybe G has weight three. And here H also comes here and it has weight two, maybe something else also comes here, I don't care. Now, the relations I introduce is exactly like Levit path algebras, but in each layer. So look at this one here and consider the first layer. So you have E1, F1, and G1, write the Levit path algebra relation there. So it becomes E1, E1 star, F1, F1 star, G1, G2, uh, oops, G1, G1 star is U. Go to the second layer, write the relations. So you get E2, E2 star, F2, F2 star, G2, G2 star is U. And keep doing all that. So go through all the layers and write these relations. So this gives you the edges getting out. Now, how about the edges getting in? This time, you stay on, you stay on this H and go through all the levels. So I get H1 star H1, H2 star H2, this gives me U. Okay, so, in, so they call it Kunz-Krieger relation. The Kunz-Krieger relation that edge is getting out, you go through all the layers of the graphs and you do the, the Levit path algebra relations. CK2, I, I forgot if this is CK1 or CK2, anyhow, this one you keep one edge and you go through all the layers. This gives you a Levit path algebra, it's called the weighted Levy path algebra. I can also I can write also here W meaning weighted, but look if I say weighted then uh, you know everybody understands so I just write this. And then you can show that if you have now one loop N sort of sorry n loops, n plus k weight. Then the Levy path algebra you get has is the the original Levy algebra that constructed in sixties. So now the question is that can you study now these new uh, algebras because these are very very different than the usual Levy path algebras. Okay. Now. Starting of the paper is here. I want to give you the representation graph for E and construct the module. And this is very combinatorial definition. Before I do that, let me just remind you of a covering of a graph. So what is a covering of a graph? So if I give you a graph E, this is, a, this is actually nice. Okay, if I give you a graph E, F is a covering of a graph. If you have a morphism of graphs, meaning that, so vertices goes to vertices, edges goes to edges, 
and you, you guess that, so they fit together nicely. So if I start from here and this goes here and this goes here, the edge goes here, okay? So you are the target and the range of F when I push it to E match, they all match, okay? So this is called the homomorphism of a graph. Now the covering, and that should remind you of when you do uh, topological spaces, you have a covering that locally, everywhere you look locally, the cover uh, sort of imit uh, imitate, imitate the, the actual space. It's the same here. Look, if I give you V and you push it to U, and in U, there are three edges getting out, in V also there are three edges getting out. If in U, two edges getting in, in V also two edges getting in. So locally, it's the same as E but F could be expanded. So it would be very, very big and collapse into E. So this is called the covering of the graph E. So remember this, now the construction of representation graph F for E. And I'm gonna do this in one go for weighted graphs, but then if you are not comfortable, just think of usual graph. Again, you get some notion, I'll, I'll read. Okay, so, you have a homomorphism of graph from F, so this F is a representation, to E bar. Remember, E bar means that if E has weight, if E has weight three, E bar is E1, E2, E3. So you get all that. So E1, E2, E3, F1, F2. So, so you have them here. And I write it here and I'll show you in a little. Locally, Phi covers, see if you can imagine, all the tags, so all the, all the outgoing tags and all the incoming structured edges. So let me just show you what I mean by that. This, if, if we get over this, that means that F is a representation for E. So let me just give you with an example. Okay, so this is your weighted graph. So E has weight three, so I consider E1, E2, E3. F has weight two, so F1 and F2, and G has weight three, G1, G2, G3, and then H1 and H2 and maybe K1 and K2 also coming. So this is your E. And you're in the setting E, e hat, F. So you have this V which, which drops into U. Now, what is the representation? Look, here, three things are getting out, but the tags here is one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. So I want to cover all the tags. So I need to cover one, two, and three. Doesn't matter what edge, I need to cover just the tags. So maybe I need to cover one. So I just choose E1 here. I need to cover two. So I, I do F2. And I will need to cover three. So I do G3. So that covers all the tags. Now the other, around, the other way, I have H1 and H2 coming and K1 and K2 coming. Now I need to cover all the structured edges. Namely, I need to cover H and K. I don't care about the tags. So one option could be H1 and K1. So I cover them. But look, I have other options. So I could do E1 and E2 and um, G3. So that covers all the tags. And here also I could do um, H2 and K1. So you see different. So that gives me another option, okay? This is a covering graph. So that's the covering graph, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a representation graph. This is a, a definition of a representation graph. I can of course do it nicely in two lines, but this is an example. Now the game starts here. Look, for any locally, for any U that I 
have, I can come up with these sort of arrangements. I can have this one, I can have a different one, right? So I pick all of these for all the, so if you have U1, U2, U3, U4, and so on in your original graph, for each of them, you come up with some representation like this. But now the game is that they have to fit together, right? Because if this is V1 and V2 and V3 representing this, well, they, there are these edges here that ha you have to lift it here. So they have to fit together. So it's not, it's not you know, up to you, you pick this one and next time you pick the other one. They have to fit together nicely. So if you start with the example, you see what I mean. So it's like really like these puzzles that you have to choose nicely to fit together. Now, before I give you an example, let me show you how it, what it means on the level of graph with just weight one. So if you have graph with weight one, then E hat is just E. And locally, if there are three things going out and two things coming in, then I don't worry, I don't have to worry about the tags, okay? Because they're all weight one. So remember, I need to just get one of them because all of them has weight one. So I sample one, maybe I choose this one. And on this level, I have to get both of them because I want both structure edges. So I get, I have to get both. So, so on, an unweighted graph is much easier. You just basically, and it makes sense to me. I mean, the cover, remember covering means that I have to get all of them. That would be covering. But representation is that you sample one. Maybe I get this one, I put it here. I don't need this right now. Okay. And then, again, you have this, you have choices again, as you see, I could do, here you don't have choices, but here you have choices. So you have all these different ways and you have to fit them together. Okay. Now, let me give you an example, what it, what it means to fit together. Okay. So I go to the original example of Levit that A2 is isomorphic to A2 plus one. I can recover this with this weighted graph, E1, E2, E3, and F1, F2, F3. Okay, now, if you think about this, so this is U, this is V1, and this is V2, look, here, because the tags here is three and three, so three things has to get out, and then Structure edges, there are only two edges, E and F. Two things has to get in. So I can do this, I think, like E1, F2. Now, E1, E2, three go, should goes out in F3. V3. So here also the same story. So F3 gets in. So maybe E1 goes here. F E2 goes here and F E3 goes here. So you see, you have to be careful how to fix this. And let me show you now. This becomes the representation graph of this here. So this is what I was constructing here. So you get a representation graph of this. Again, my question, have you seen this construction somewhere before or in other, you know, in other sets? So let me give you more of this so that you see, I think there's something here. It's not, you know, it, it's interesting, I, I would think. Okay, so what if I just start with um, um, this one, I think. This, is, this gives you the original Levit algebra of A is equal to A2, and it's among the most interesting uh, algebra. So now, how would you give me the covering graph? Uh, you have, uh, sorry, representation graphs, all kinds, you, know, you can get a lot of different representation graphs. Here are two examples. Sorry, this is for three. So let me just do this three. So there are three edges getting out. So now you have to go and check all I said is correct. Namely, in any given point, look, because 
remember the covering and then sampling because I'm rate one. In each point, there is only one edge should get out. Here it is. In this point, one edge is getting out and three edge should getting in. EFG, you know, EFG is getting in. Okay. So now here also, one edge should get out. Here is one edge is getting out and three edge should get in. Okay, here EFG. And the same here. Now, totally different example. This also fits here. E is getting out, then I don't have to write this. You understand that EFG have to get in. Okay, so now here F is gets out and EFG gets in. And as you see, these are up to you. I can, I can give you all kind of representation graph. Just choose E and F. Good, so this is an example. Now, the next step is that out of this F, I want to construct B of F, which would be a module over Levit half algebra. And you know, I want to say that this is a nice way to do it. Okay, so let me just give you why an example, and I just flash the definition for you. The way you do this is, how do you construct this gadget VF? So what you do, you look at your representation graph and collect all the vertices and get a vector space over these vertices. So this is a vector space over all the vertices of your edge. Okay. Now, the next step is that this is your E, and now you're working with E and you want to act, you want to have an action of Levy path algebra on e, a VF. So what do I need to tell you? I have to tell you if you have an element of a Levy path algebra E, and you multiply with one of these EI, what happens, right? Okay. What happens is that you look at this, uh, I get excited each time here. You, you look at this graph here and then you just slide these points. So if you are V1 and you multiply it with E, just slide it here, you get V2. Now, if you have V2 and you multiply it with F, you slide it to V3. Now, if you have V2 and you multiply it with um, E, well, there is nothing E, is not represented here. So V2, I actually do it this way. I want to have the right module. So V2 times E is zero, but V2 times F is V3. And if you do E star, you go backwards. So if you have V2 E star, so V2 E star, you go back and you get V1. So the, this is a Levy path algebra module that basically you travel along this. So let me give you one more example. So what if I start with V5 and I multiply with F, uh, E, and F star. So just follow your notes here. So you have V5, multiply with F, you get to V1, multiply with E, you get FV2, and then multiply with v, F star, you get V6. So I, get, I go from here to here. So for any of these representation graphs, I give you a module. Now, the first thing you might ask is that, okay, so these looks, uh, how would you construct this? Because yeah, locally, I know how to lift things, but then if I want to put them together, these little bits of puzzles have to match. How would you do that? Especially here, it took me a long time to come up with this example. Well, there is a very nice way to do this, let me just write the lemma. E is your graph, it could be weighted or not, whatever. And this is a covering. So remember the covering that locally is the same. You can prove that any representation of T is also a representation of E. So if I give you a representation for T, it becomes a representation of E. Okay, this has not yet solved our problem. How is this gonna help? We have, for any graph E, there is a universal cover. Okay, so you can easily construct a universal cover, and as soon as you have a universal cover, it's very easy to get a representation graph. Let me give you an example. And I'm gonna give you an example for this one, A and B. Okay, so if you look at this graph E, 
the universal cover of this looks like this. And you can recognize this. This is a calligraph. This is a calligraph. Kaylee, of Kaylee, Kaylee. K, uh, sorry, I might calligraph of group of uh, um, rank two. Okay, so this is, it, it looks like that, right? So this is the universal covering for E. So anywhere you see these, so this is your T, right? This is your T. So just basically collapse all these points to here. And anywhere you see A here, collapse it to A. Anywhere you see B, collapse it to B. This be becomes a universal cover for E. Now, how do I get a representation for this? Very easy. You start with here and just travel along the graph. So anywhere you want, this, maybe here, this, wherever you want, maybe here, here, and you go. This gives you a path, the rest, so the rest is that you can feel it automatically because from here, remember that when you are doing the representation graph, there should be two edges coming. So I don't have any choice. Here, there should be two, two edges coming. I have no choice. One is this one, the other is this. Here, I have two edges coming. So as long as I give you a path anywhere I want, the rest, it just constructs itself because I have no other choices. And this is a representation for T. And again, in my head, it makes sense. I'm getting some sample along the T. And that representation by that lemma gives you a representation for E. So I can come up with all kinds of representations. Okay, I, I have about uh, 10 minutes, that's good. Now, so E is a graph, again, weighted or not. Then I call RGE, the category of representation of E, all that F, all that puzzle fitting together. And well, you have a functor here. So if you give me a, the, one of these diagrams, the one of these graphs, I gave you VF. And here you have to be careful. You have to think a little bit how to const construct the um, morphisms, but you do it as you should. And this gives you, well, a functor here. Now, going back, when this VF is simple, because at the moment I didn't answer that, when this VF is simple. So I would say, let's call this F irreducible, an irreducible representation, if VF is simple or ir irreducible. So how can I tell you when, well, one of these F that I give you, which one is simple, which one is not simple? For example, uh, the one I give you here is not simple, but the one, uh, that, that one here, this one gives you a simple one. This, this is a simple one. What, how do you check that? How do you check that? Okay. So theorem, before I do the theorem, maybe I'll just remind you of some of the terminologies again. Mm. So E is a graph, so weighted graph. Uh, F is the representation. So remember FD, that means uh, the double graph, all the F, all the edges, and then E star I put there. So you can go along E or you can go back along E star. So double graph, double graph. And also here, double graph. Okay, so this phi, lifts to phi from E double to E hat double. This is very easy. If the edges go wherever, the E star of that also goes to the, the same thing with star. The path of FD, again, these are all the path that you can construct along FD. Just look at that and get all the path along ED bar and that phi lifts again here. So all the path of FD 
is sent all on the other path here. And the last notation I'm gonna use, and I'm sure you can guess what, uh, what it means. If I put here U, maybe you're in, that means all the paths starting from U. All the paths starting from U. If I put the uh, here, that means all the paths ending in V. And I know there are all kinds of notation for that. So starting from U or ending, so you can choose your favorite one. Okay. Now here is the theorem. Theorem. Vf is simple if and only if, if I look at the graph, this happens. You look at the, all the paths starting from U in FD and you push it inside the E bar and you do for another one, another vertex and you push it inside ED. If U and D are different, so if you start from different nodes or different vertices, then these should be different. If that happens, then VF is simple. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I mean, very quickly, uh, uh, I have very little time, but uh, look at this one here. This is the representation graph for three edges, E, F, G with no weight, okay? And you can immediately see that if I look at this one and the paths getting out of that is different than the, this one and the paths getting out of that. For example, here, the first path getting out of V1 is E. Here in V2, there is no path E getting out, so it's G. So here the path V1 of F D is different than the path of F D V3. And you can see immediately, you can just write formally that any, any node you get, the path getting out of that is different than this one. So therefore this VF is simple, the V path algebra. Now for, uh, so you might say, okay, so this is simple. Which one, can I get that with this chain simple module? Yes, can you, uh, look. Um, so VF is just this bunch of vertices and Levit path algebra just push around these vertices to something else. So wherever you start, for example, you start here, okay? Push it with one edge you get here. Push it, you get here. Now push it again, you are here, 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 and then you have to circle around this. So anywhere you start and you push it with Levit path algebra, you get into this sort of black hole and you end up here and you circle around this. Anywhere here, when you push, you have. So this makes sense to say that this VF is isomorphic to that. Remember the infinite paths that I said? It's the same as V of the E, F, G repeating itself. Similar to E, F, G repeating itself. So just, this is just an idea, but you can prove that, that yeah, that this uh, VF is the same as the Chen simple, simple module EFG, EFG, EFG. So EFG continuing, and, and because here also you see I'm repeating myself again. So systematically you can study this and um, I have, uh, how much time do I have? Maybe I maybe five minutes, Rusebe, or? Oh, that's, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. So before I just do the last thing, let me just tell you this theorem again, theorem that this is not, again, I, I ask you, have you seen this stuff before? Because uh, if I just talk about this in terms of language of a category, the condition I gave you is not really real. Look, we, so F was the representation of E, VF is simple, if and only if, we said this happens, that uh, path that you get starting from U should be different than the path starting from V. So they should be different, of course, if U and V are different. Now, in the language of category, 
this this is something very known. This speed is very known. So what does that mean? Okay. So remember that if you have a graph E, so these are vertices and edges, right? So in, this is, contains vertices and edges. But I can look at E as a category. Now the objects are vertices and the morphism are the paths now. So this is a little bit different. So as a graph, you can handle all the edges. So here as a graph, this has edges and you, you, you have that. But as a category, you, morphisms are the paths, right? Okay, so I can look at this as a category now. When I say we, I have a homomorphism of graphs, if I look at the language of category, it's nothing but a functor from this category F to this category E. Okay, so any morphism I give you, um, yeah it gives me a functor from here to here. The concept of covering, I Googled this. So remember this concept of locally the same. You can do this in a general category theory. So for any category, you have a covering. And look, I mean, I Google and there are all these things that, okay, for any category, you have a topological space and then this cover, covering, you go through the topological space, what you get is a covering space of that. What? I don't know if there is this representation of a category which reduces to what I just said in terms of representation of graph. But what this means now in the language of category, look, all this means the path is just the morphism of a category now. So I don't have to write this. This is just all the morphism of the category. And you, that means all the morphism starting from you. There is a notion for this in category theory. It's called the star of you, star of you. This is all the morphisms starting from you and then makes sense like it creates a star okay and if you have a functor here phi phi of u or maybe i call it v v star of v that means this speed now so what it tells me it tells me that if you okay here the stars should be different here so how should i say that Okay, so at the moment I have this, so star of V, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, is the, it goes to star of V, so I have always this. Now, if this is injective, that means that um, in category theory, you call it the star injective functor. So now this condition is really just talks about when you have this in, in star injective functor, on the level of the uh, graphs. Okay, so sorry, I, I'm bungled up a little bit, but let me just finish this with um, the last thing. So E graph, so you had RGE, the category of all representations, where it gives you the mod LKE. Now, you can prove that you can, this, this is nice. You can prove that this category of all the representations, in fact, you can, write this as a disjoint union of, of some subcategories. And these subcategories are connected as follows, that all of these have the same universal covering. So, so in each of these, to the mod LE, there is a unique universal representation, F, maybe call it T, so that gives you to be T. And there is a unique uh, irreducible representation F, which goes to VF. So in each of these, you always have only one representation, which gives you a simple one in each of these here. Now, there is a lot of representation sitting between the universal one and F, a lot of them. But there is only one minimal and there is only one universal, and guess what happens? This is minimal, this is universal, this, is not, this doesn't give you a simple module, but what this gives you is an indecomposable module. So this gives you an indecomposable, so I can also construct indecomposable modules. And very, very last statement that it shows you, I think there are a lot more can be done, is that, okay, there are a lot of representations sitting between the minimal and the universal, 
some of these could be in decomposable, some of these it could be not in decomposable. It depends now on the characteristic of the field. So yeah, let me finish here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe we can unmute ourselves momentarily and thank the speaker. John, thank you. Um, are there any quick questions, speaker? Questions, comments? I have a question. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a while since I looked at these and I'm not an expert on Chen modules, but as far as I understand Chen modules, you only can build those if there's an infinite path in the graph. And, and it sounds like what you're saying here, you can build these things for any graph, even if uh, there are no infinite paths in the graph. So does that mean you get representations for those level path algebras, whereas there weren't Chen ones? Yeah, so, um, so for, for the Chen one, if you, if, you have an, if, you, if, you start, if you start with an infinite path, you get a simple module. If you don't have an infinite path, namely it could be that you have sync, then you can also, uh, it's in his paper, you can also get a simple module. So these are the path ending with a sync. So there is no way you can go further. You can construct a simple module. And then uh, Ranga also generalized this. So imagine you have uh, vertices that are infinite paths getting out. Okay, this kind of looks like sync. So you can also construct simple modules out of vertices that infinite things getting out. In this paper, we didn't touch on that, but all this should go through for infinite path, infinite emitters, so to say. Sorry, infinite emitters, vertices with infinite emitters. So yeah, so if you have infinite paths, you have simple modules. If you have sinks, you have simple modules. And Rangel's construction of if you have also infinite emitters in a graph, you have simple modules. And um, here I didn't mention the sync, but also all this construction goes through if you have sync. So, but we didn't touch on infinite emitters in this one because it's already getting, yeah. Thank you, other I, questions? Yeah, do you have this, your techniques gives any information about the Annihilating primitive ideals, or is it too much? Yeah, this is something, I mean, yeah, so this, in fact, Raymond has uh, did one theorem on annihilator. So you can formally say what is the annihilator of these modules. Mm -hmm. You can formally say that. But, you know, we try to see that, can we prove that this LNM, these, the original LNM, Levy path algebras, are primitive, and I Googled around and I couldn't see that. We know it's semi primitive, I guess, but primitive we couldn't see. And we tried to prove it this way, but yet we, we couldn't see anything at the moment. Yeah. But formally, you can say annihilator of these are, you know, what, what's the annihilator of these modules? Yeah. yeah. So, Ruzba, you mentioned the recent work of Ayn and Nam, uh, which, which sort of put a big umbrella over a lot of these constructions, is, is what you're doing sort of generalizing what they're doing as well, or is it headed off in a different direction? Um, I'm, I'm, oh, okay, now uh, they are here, but I, I, think, I think ours is just sort of a combinatorial, combinatorial construction of the module. So for E, I give you an F. Mm -hmm. But um, their work, I think it's more algebraic. So um, they look at the, I think, I mean, I might be wrong, but they look at the Levy path algebra and that infinite paths, what well, infinite paths translate into the direct limit of the structures inside the Levy path algebra. And they, I think they put together these infinite, uh, these yeah. structures using a direct limit and capture somehow that infinite path. And I like the, the comment they have, Nam and on, that they say, how how does this infinite path come in? You know, you know, like philosophically, how does you know you are working with finite things, but suddenly you have an infinite path here. How does that? And yeah, so there is this justification, but maybe they can say more. I'm not sure. Or maybe what you're doing will somehow shed some light on that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Ruzba, also, what's the status of your work? Is it on archive somewhere yet? Or no, no, we are typing. We are typing it. Yeah. So hopefully in a, a week or two. Great. Okay. Other questions? Just a brief uh, kind of 
question. Um, it, it seems that your representation graphs are actually immersions uh, into the into the graph that you're representing, rather than covers, right? In general, I mean, so the star sets immer, uh, inject. Is that, yes. Is that correct? It's so uh, it doesn't inject. It doesn't inject because look, uh, the air, I mean, your graph E could has only two loops, but F is very, was very very big. But, yes, but, but local, locally it injects. Uh, locally, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah so this is, this is an immersion. Um, and, and, and graph immersions um, are studied by, um, uh, they're, they're very important in, in uh, geometric group theory to study subgroups of free groups uh, by the work of Stallings. And you can classify graph immersions using the theory of inverse semigroups and inverse categories in much the same way that you can classify covers using the fundamental group, okay, of the, of the base space. I'm just wondering if there might be some sort of connection. I can send you a paper or two oh, on and this. You said graph immersions, uh, you mentioned a name? Yeah, uh, I can send you some papers on this, okay? Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Great. Other, other questions? Thank you, John. All right. Well, I think maybe this is a good time to wrap things up. I'll remind you of the upcoming two talks in this series. Uh, the next is uh, four weeks from today, March 17th. Uh, Leah, Leah Voss will speak. And then on April 21st, uh, Benjamin Steinberg will speak. Uh, I'll be sending out the same sort of uh, information about how to link into Zoom. You can use this same link for the additional two talks. Uh, we have recorded this one, so we're going to try to post it relatively soon on the uh, ARCS website. And uh, I wish all of you a, a good rest of your day, however many hours that might still be. And let's thank our speaker one more time. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excuse me.